Hi <laughs> everyone. Just put this in my pocket for now. If I check one two. Okay. So uh, can I test this? Is it working? Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, whereas our esteemed teacher Raj in his talk just now gave us a very personal story of humanity and the struggles that he went to. I am going to attempt in the next hopefully 18 minutes to tell you another story related to humanity but perhaps on a different level. Okay, let's get started. Uh, in my 23 years of existence, I never thought that any of my ideas would ever be worthy of giving a TED talk on. So yeah, top of the world. It doesn't get any better than this. The title of this presentation is we are all explorers, which may not seem evident at first glance because the word explorer is often synonymous in the picture of our imagination with people that usually look like this, the really brave and adventurous type of people in the world. Admittedly, I look nothing like the people in those pictures and I don't think a great many of us have the opportunity of having an awesome job as being like an astronaut or what is that, a professional hipster level maximum. <laughs> um, okay, um, for us modern day desk bound urban people, there's just something about explorers that makes us think of the select few of the human race, of people who spend their lives boldly going to places we would never even dare to go to and probably never get a chance to go to. We also don't tend to think of ourselves as explorers because these people who do get the opportunity to wander to far and exciting places are usually the privileged and elite class of our civilization. That and compounded by the fact that nowadays there seems to be nowhere left to explore anymore. It, it appears that people alive today have arrived on the scene at a time in which we are too late to explore the Earth, and we are still too early to explore the universe. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a human story, but on a different level from Teacher Raj's talk. We've already seen and mapped the Earth in its entirety from space, and we still lack the necessary technology to carry us to the stars, or as Arnold Schwarzenegger put it, get your ass to Mars. Um, okay. Uh, nowadays, we'd be lucky enough to explore the latest shopping mall or discover a new McDonald's that's opened up in the next town. We've become victims of our own success. So we end up asking ourselves one of the big questions of life. Where do we go from here? Seeing that our exploratory lifestyle has taken a sidestep to the more peaceful and tranquil life of modern human civilization. But I would like to argue, ladies and gentlemen, and make a very strong case today that the inherent exploratory nature of all human beings everywhere is not only an essential part of what makes us human, it should not be discounted yet, and it should be preserved because of the role that it played in having made us, the human race, successful in the past, and it will no doubt play a big role in helping us overcome many of the challenges in the future. What I mean by exploratory nature, ladies and gentlemen, is the inherent naturally born human desire to chase uncharted new places, uncharted new places and explore untouched new horizons. Horizons that may exist in the real world, the physical world that we live in, or, here's the kicker, here's the exciting part, the world of the expression of the human mind, the world of ideas. Herman Melville, the author of the Romantic Era classic, Moby Dick, it's a book about a giant sperm whale, once spoke about the nature of, the exploratory nature of human beings, saying that I am tormented by an everlasting itch for things distant and remote. I long to sail forbidden seas. <laughs> 